hello everyone this is our sixth lecture on the course title fluid mechanics 2 and in this lecture we are going to discuss about various factors which are going to affect drag on the body in the previous lecture we have discussed types of drags and uh, types of bodies so we will start this lecture uh, with the revision of previous lecture so what we have discussed in the previous lecture there are two types of body one is the streamline body and another is the bluff body so streamline body is that body when uh, surface of the body getting coincide with the streamlines when it uh, placed in the flowing fluid uh, that body is known as streamline body and if the surface of that body does not get coincide with the uh, streamlines of the flowing fluid if it is placed in the flow uh, that body is known as a blub body we have also seen some examples of the streamline body uh, one example was the fish which is an example of the uh, streamline body you can also uh, take an example of plane uh, which was uh, you know uh, inspired from the uh, uh, shape of the birds so uh, if you design your body as a streamlined body in that case big formation of the uh, at the downstream of that body due to the separation of boundary layer would be the smaller size of that wake would be the smaller and in that case whatever drag acting on that body uh, would also be a smaller but in case of blob body as the wake formation will be larger whatever drag acting on that body will also be larger so we'll start our uh, lecture with the the first factor which is going to affect drag on the body that is shape of the immersed body now before going for the uh, discussion we will just go through the equation which we have uh, uh, you know derived for the drag force and lift force so we will consider here drag force equation which is given by a coefficient of drag multiplied by area of the body projected area of the body multiplied by density multiplied by relative velocity square of relative velocity divided by 2 now if you look at this equation, particular equation, uh, just keep this CD as, at a side because it is dimensionless. Uh, but if you look at the other parameter, if my uh, projected area of body is goes on increasing, obviously drag will goes on increasing as it is directly proportional with the drag. If my density of the fluid increases higher, drag will also be higher. Again, if my velocity increases, in that case my drag will be increases in terms of square of velocity so i can say that my drag will be directly proportional to the area of the body density of the fluid and velocity in terms of square of velocity so my drag would be proportional in terms of square of velocity so all those parameters going to affect the uh, drag on the body so we will discuss those one by one our first and foremost parameter is the shape of immersed body that is area of the body projected area of the body so how it is going to affect our drag force if you look at the uh, uh, an example of this plate so if i'm uh, considering this plate which is placed uh, you know perpendicular to the uh, direction of motion as my direction of motion is this and if i place this plate in direction to the perpendicular to the direction of motion in that case whatever uh, projected area of that body would be the slightly higher than if i place this plate in parallel to the direction of motion so whatever the face of that body facing to the uh, you know flow that would be higher in case of perpendicular position but if I am considering the parallel position in that case whatever the face of plate face, facing uh, facing uh, this uh, fluid flow would be the laser and obviously as my projected area of body is laser drag would be the laser in this case my projected area will be like this so this would become my one dimension of the area Again, if I am considering the projected area of this body, that would be a too small. If I project this uh, uh, body in this direction, so it's uh, whatever the height of the body would get reduced, and obviously area would get reduced, and drag would get reduced. You can look at some other example. So in this case, uh, whatever the coefficient of CD is coming, uh, 1.28. If you consider a prism, and if it is placed like this, where it's uh, whatever the face which is facing to the uh, flow that is a slightly uh, you know higher in the area as compared to this uh, portion a rear end uh, where area of the prism goes on decreasing if i place this body exactly in opposite direction in that case uh, it would become you know partially streamlined body and in that case drag would get reduced but if i place that prism in this way so in that case drag would be higher and here cd is 1.14 you can also take an example of sphere where uh, uh, drag is slightly lesser as compared to previous two uh, you can take an example of here it is streamline body it's the area which is facing to the flow that is smaller as compared to those previous one and that's why drag whatever the drag exerted on this particular body would be 
smaller you can see here uh, coefficient of drag is coming as a 0.045 you can also take an example of bullet where the, it's a whatever the front end uh, it generally designed like this so where uh, whatever my flow would get diverted and slightly uh, due to that whatever my uh, projected area of the bullet would be slightly lesser than uh, if i place this uh, bullet exactly in uh, uh, reverse shape in, the, in this case also my drag coefficient will be smaller and obviously my drag uh, which is acting on the body would be smaller now uh, next parameter is the position of the uh, body in the flowing fluid how body is placed in the flowing fluid as we have discussed in the previ uh, previous case if i am considering a streamlined body so what your drag acting on that body uh, would be the laser as compared to other shape of the body like say blub body but the position of that streamlined body also going to matter here is the example uh, if you see the uh, in the first example here what are my position of the streamlined body uh, exactly placed in such a way that its surface is getting slightly getting coincide with the pattern of the streamline but if i am considering another position of that streamline body that would be placed slightly uh, you know slanted with respect to the ground and in that case my drag would get increased considerably if you consider an area of that body so here it is projected area of this particular body would come like this and uh, so this will become its length which is obviously smaller but if i am considering the projected area of this body that would be uh, become much larger than whatever we have seen in the previous case so this is how your shape of the body also going to uh, affect what your drag acting on your uh, body now next uh, fluid characteristic this is our uh, last factor which is going to affect our uh, drag force which is acting on the body so uh, as we have seen in the equation drag force which is directly proportional with the density so if density increases obviously drag force is also going to increase uh, so if i am considering two fluid like say water and air so i would say that uh, walking in the air will be thousand time uh, easier than walking in the water why because density of water is uh, uh, about 1000 kg per meter cube not about it's actually 1000 kg per meter cube at 20 degrees celsius but if i am considering uh, density of air which is almost 1.25 kg per meter cube so uh, if i am considering wa walking in the water that would be uh, become a thousand time more difficult than walking in the air so this is how if you want to walk in the water you can experience that drag exerted by the water on you so any object which is moving through the fluid at that time density also going to affect the drag force which is acting on that particular body uh, you can also take an example of mercury here uh which is uh, which uh, whose density is almost 13000 kg per meter cube so i would say that uh, walking in the mercury would be th uh, 13000 times more difficult than walking in the air so this is how your fluid characteristic is going to affect your uh, drag which is acting on the body and our uh, uh last factor that is the velocity uh, that is going to affect your uh, uh, drag which is acting on the body uh, that is if velocity increases drag would be increases in terms of square uh, that's why generally uh, and uh, almost all vehicle winner ask you to uh, run at the lower speed to maintain your mileage so because uh, if you uh, uh, go beyond that particular speed whatever your uh, requirement of the power uh, to overcome the drag that will also get increase and your mileage of the uh, vehicle will get reduced and that's why uh, almost all vehicle having their uh, you know economical speed uh, almost in 40 km per hour to 50 km per hour and if you go beyond that speed obviously your drag would be increases in terms of square of that velocity and that's why they generally ask you to maintain your speed uh, up to the certain limit up to that certain limit and um, uh, if you consider any particular vehicle uh, which is uh, uh, nowadays generally it is it become common to design your vehicle uh, as a uh, you know aerodynamically efficient uh, uh, design so whatever the drag which is coming on your vehicle that would be a uh, smaller so um, whenever they are going to design or whenever they are going to provide the shape of that particular body as a streamlined body in that case whatever uh, drag acting on that particular body would be get reduced because smaller will be the wake formation at the downstream uh, laser will be the drag which is acting on the 
body and that's why generally uh, you know nowadays they are uh, providing some spoilers at the downstream because if you consider uh, this particular uh, design of the body without spoiler in that case whatever your wake formation or vortices would get formed at the downstream of the vehicle and that is going to affect your uh, you know drag which is acting on the front side of the vehicle uh, if we are talking about the you know aerodynamic design of the body or efficient aerodynamic design of the body uh, which is uh, you know this uh, whatever equation we have discussed uh, previously uh, whatever equation we have seen previously fd is equal to cd multiplied by a multiplied by rho u square upon 2 uh, this is how your uh, you know drag will be governed but you cannot directly go every time with the streamlined uh, body design or aerodynamically efficient design because uh, uh, if you are going for the streamlined design, uh, you can take an example of uh, bullet train and normal train. So, if you consider in bullet train, so what are the design of that particular uh, uh, body in terms of streamlined body, uh, that would become a slightly complex and uh, if you are considering the smaller vehicles like say car or uh, you know any, any truck, so generally in that case, uh, whatever uh, a requirement or comfort uh, that going to matter or you can say a requirement of the space um, that is also going to uh, you know reduce because in case of streamlined design uh, already that design is uh, complex uh, in nature and if you're providing a streamlined design to any truck so whatever your available space that would be get reduced slightly obviously whatever drag acting on the truck would be more than whatever drag acting on the uh, particular car or any particular body which is uh, designed as a streamlined body but you need to look for, for other parameters like say space requirement if you are going to design your truck as a streamlined body so in the front end uh, you can imagine that uh, you are going to provide the shape or whatever the shape having the bullet train and uh, in that case obviously your uh, space requirement or uh, your length will be increased so whatever material you are going to provide there whatever material you are going to use to uh, manufacture that particular truck or assemble that particular truck uh, that is going to increase and obviously your economy is uh, going to hamper and that economy, uh, you know, if you are saving cost there uh, as in terms of fuel, uh, that would be, you know, uh, not efficient, not, uh, you can say, not uh, significant as compared to investment you are made in while you are going to manufacturing that particular vehicle. And that's why uh, every time we cannot go for the, directly for the streamlined design, but instead we can, uh, you know, reduce some... Uh, area uh, from the frontal side or you can uh, do some modification in the design like say here uh, we have provided spoiler at the downstream you can allow some flow, uh, flow of air uh, which is uh, you know uh, by providing here uh, uh, some uh, uh, air splitter uh, by uh, using those air splitter you can uh, reduce some uh, whatever the flow which is going to the downstream or you can allow some flow which is going to move through the uh, downside of that particular vehicle and uh, that is how you can reduce your wake formation at the downstream and if you are reducing that wake formation or uh, formation of those vortices at the downstream obviously drag acting with that particular vehicle would be get reduced. Uh, nowadays uh, whenever we are uh, talking about the aerodynamic efficient design at that time uh, we are considering all those factors and they are uh, you know bringing us the most efficient design that would uh, going to produce uh, higher uh, mileage. That's all in this particular lecture. Thank you.